The Kansas City Chiefs and Philadelphia Eagles may have made it to the Super Bowl last year, but how many games will they win in 2023? And how does an Aaron Rodgers trade impact both the Packers and Jets 2023 seasons? We get all that and much more on today's episode of Locked On NFL. You are Locked On NFL. Your daily NFL podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. What's going on, football fans, and welcome into another episode of Locked On NFL, your daily podcast bringing you all the biggest stories from around the NFL in around 30 minutes. Proud part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks so much as always making Locked On NFL your first listen of the day every day. Don't forget you can subscribe and follow for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast so you never miss the latest episodes. And today's episode on this Tuesday edition of Locked On NFL, that means you have my good friend Luke Braun at Luke Braun NFL on Twitter and Ross Jackson at Ross Jackson Nola on Twitter, your NFL experts. And I'll tell you what, Luke, I would be a millionaire if insurance fraud wasn't le- wasn't illegal. Uh, as we get into today's episode of Locked on NFL, the first day, I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm just what? Joking. <laughs> I needed Did a, I miss I wanted, a bit? I wanted a funny thing to open up the show. That's what I thought of. That's where we are today. Set the tone for this Tuesday episode of oh Locked on NFL. Today's Locked on NFL, dude, we're going to go through win totals across a good portion of the NFL. We're going to start off with the Speaking biggest teams. <laughs> to start off with the biggest teams, the biggest, um, you know, some of the biggest storylines, things like that. We'll take a look at those and kind of let you know where Luke and I sit on these, uh, the, these fan duel win loss or win totals for 2023. Then we'll get to some of the superlatives, most surprising, most interesting, which team to take the under on when they're the lowest, all of that. So you'll get a whole bunch of information about a bunch of NFL teams and today's episode and then of course we'll wrap up with our yike and like of the week uh, and i can guarantee you mine has at least a little bit to do with some purple and gold so luke as we get started today let's start off with the two super bowl champions kansas city chiefs as well as the philadelphia eagles kansas city chiefs favor or right now at uh their win total 11 and a half the philadelphia eagles 10 and a half these were the two super bowl teams in 2022 where do you see these two teams landing in 2023 of course still with the nfl draft on the way yeah that, and that's the real headline here is mm-hmm. uh i'd wait and maybe hit these in you know may or june we know, we know a little bit more about the rosters because you can have things like aj brown trades happen on uh that that affect the lines a lot right you never know um, or the hollywood brown trades which don't <laughs> yeah uh <laughs> I see both of these teams hitting their over. I think 11 and five for Kansas or 11 and six for Kansas city would be pretty disappointing for them. It's just that FanDuel is not going to want to go past 12 for any. Yeah. Team, yeah. Like ever. So it, I think that there's been a lot of opportunity when it comes to sports books like FanDuel uh, to hit overs on favored teams mm-hmm. like the chiefs and i think the eagles look they found something with jalen hurts right yeah for and sure. i understand that they kind of had you know they lost some talent here and there um or i think they lost like the most compensatory free agents in the league this year like, yeah they, especially they over have... the defensive side right so i get that um but again at 10 and 7 would still be hitting the over you'd have to ha- see the eagles go nine and eight I don't see it. I'm hitting both of their overs. Um, yeah, I, I believe in them. Yeah, I like the Eagles over too. Uh, here are some of the opponents that they'll face. Of course, they have their division, all their division opponents twice: the Giants, the Commanders, as well as of course the Cowboys. Then they have the Bills at home, but they've got San Francisco at home. They've got Minnesota at home. They've got Arizona at home. They have Miami at home, and then they're on the road going up against teams like Tampa and. Uh, uh, New England and the Los Angeles Rams and the Seattle Seahawks. So I, I really do like the over for this team uh, at 10 and a half. Uh, uh, there's for people who are curious too, because Luke and I, Luke, Luke more so, but uh, we've also discussed this a little bit, found out that some people don't always know how win totals work. Right. And so oh. the, the half, the half part of all of this is because you either 
win 11 games or you win 10 games. So if the over-under is set at 10 and a half or the win total is set at 10 and a half, the over would be 11 or more. The under would be 10 right. or less. Can't win half a game. And so right. that means nobody can tie. Uh, and ties aren't like half games. Like if you go 10, 6, and 1, you won 10 games. So yep. you would that would be the under for Philadelphia. Yep, absolutely. And then the reason why you don't do the even ones here is because if you set the win total at 10, and you're going to see a lot of pushes, a whole bunch of people right. winning, a whole bunch of teams winning and that's exactly no what their win totals are. And that's not fun. Games are meant to be won and lost. That's right. And speaking of games being meant to be won or lost, we'll eventually see who wins or loses the Aaron Rodgers trade. So that brings us to the Green Bay Packers and the New York Jets. According to FanDuel, the Jets win this very much. Uh, nine and a half is the win total for the New York Jets. Seven and a half is the win total for the Green Bay Packers. I have to tell you, I don't trust the New York Jets that much. And I certainly don't trust Aaron Rodgers that much to take the over on the Jets at this point. Yeah, it's like weird. I'm leaning toward both unders here. Mm -hmm. um, based on what I've heard from Packer fans, uh, the, I mean, and there's, of course, some sour grapes and stuff, but based yeah. on what I've heard from Packers fans, Peter Pukowski, Locked On Packers and all that, Rodgers is washed a -roni. Washed a <laughs> washed everyone like it's been over for a year and a half now and so the jets bringing that in yeah they've got a great roster around them i love the jets defense garrett wilson they mm -hmm. you know alan lazard like they they have a good team to put a quarterback into but i still kind of feel like if i'm the jets i would if i were a jets fan i would kind of rather them look toward rookie quarterbacks and try to put somebody in you know let's get will levis in that system and protect him you know and see what see what where that takes us Interesting. um i know that that's not their plan at all no but i would love that most people are most people see this as a foregone conclusion i know peter just tweeted about albert breer predicts right. that this is going to be done by uh, april 17th mm -hmm. which is an ota's deadline um so yeah I think it's a foregone conclusion. I just don't see it. You know, double digit win season for the jets seems like a lot. Yeah. The Packers is harder for me seven and a half. And again, v Vegas doesn't want to make these lines really extreme. Mm -hmm. So seven and a half, that is the third lowest win total we have here. we got a yep. couple of six and a half, couple of five and a half, but seven and a half is pretty much, that's a really low prediction for green Bay. That is not belief in Jordan love. And right. so I kind of agree with it. Like, ah, oh, yeah, seven ish, eight ish wins. It's hard for me to know where I, where that would land. Um, I guess I would lean toward the under because I think there are more outcomes where it's just bad. It's just a disaster. Yeah. And where their roster has a lot of work to do and stuff. Um, then there are outcomes where like, I think the outcome where Jordan love is good is absolutely possible. I just find it less likely. Yeah. So if I had to bet one, I would bet the under, but I'd probably avoid the Packers one. Yeah. I, I, I'm bet feeling the, less. Yeah, I'm feeling the under on that one too. Honestly, I mean, they won. They were eight and nine last year uh, with Rodgers. Uh, Matt Lafleur is out here talking about how they want to get uh, wide receivers for Jordan Love <laughs> and all these other things, which is just kind of a slap in the face if you're Aaron Rodgers in a way. Uh, I just don't really know. Like, and, and I've also yeah. experienced this. Like, I've also watched this. Like, the departure, the season after a future Hall of Fame quarterback departures is very rarely a good season. Very, very, Patriots very, very had theirs. Yeah. Saints had theirs. We've in. seen it, you know, historically across you know, Hall of Fame quarterbacks and their next seasons. Even the Andrew Luck first season. I mean, like, there's so many of these, like, examples out there that, like, oftentimes, more oftentimes than not, with very, very, very few exceptions. And I'm sure there's somebody out there ready to say, well, what about here's one single example? Well, let me introduce you to the rest of the examples, which yeah. are all bad. They're all bad after a Hall of Fame quarterback departs. Yeah, your team's just built for that guy. And and it's right. been, you know, honed and dialed in for that guy for a decade, right? Everything has been around, you know, built around and tailored toward that guy. Even if you can bring in another guy who's decent, he's not that guy. So it's going to be a weird fit. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of guys who are not that guy, one of the biggest surprises on this list to me Ooh. at nine and a half wins so that is, if you're betting that over, that's a double-digit win season and almost certainly the playoffs. Cleveland Browns. Yeah. Are we believing in the Deshaun Watson-led Cleveland Browns? Not that they they have him for a whole season. He's got the, the another off-season program with Kevin Stefanski and all that. This is very much betting on continuity. And 
that the vibe of that team isn't going to be ruined anymore. <laughs> I'm yeah. not sure I buy that. Yeah, I'm not sure that I do either. And let's 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 come back to this here in just a second. Okay. We'll pick up we'll pick up the Deshaun Watson conversation. Can the Cleveland Rounds win nine and a half? I'm gonna tell you why I don't think that they can. And we'll take a look at some of the other more interesting lines out there as well, including which five and a half win projected team you should take the under on. We got that coming up for you as we continue on with today's episode <laughs> of Locked On NFL. Speaking of hate. <laughs> Built Madness is on, and I'm I've got I'm gonna I'm ready to hate. Built Let's get it. Bar March Madness. All right, you're all into the brackets. All right, we just ended the women's side as of this recording. We're waiting for the men's go tigers to start. Go tigers. Uh, <laughs> go tigers. Go tigers. Um, but Built Bar has its own bracket as well. Their Built March Madness bracket is in its finals. Ross, you have the final two. Bars, yes, right? we have salted caramel as well as the brownie batter puff. I'm not going to lie. It's a pretty good. I mean, that's an LSU Iowa final right there. It's a pretty good matchup. That is an, <laughs> an LSU Iowa final. Uh, I love a good brownie batter puff. Salted caramel uh, can jump off a cliff. Sorry, I'm a hater. <laughs> so if you think I'm an idiot, you should go to Built March, uh, BuiltMarchBadness.com and you can bet or you can uh, vote on for your favorite, whether it's brownie batter puff or salted caramel. And uh, one lucky Locked On fan will win a 12-month subscription for their vote. And you can go vote every day. So log in every day and vote. You can get a 12-month subscription to have Built delivered to your door every month. And 50 of you will just get that free box of Built. So it's worth more than just participating in a fun little bracket. Built bars are delicious, covered in 100% real chocolate, all kinds of crazy flavors, even ones that are pure evil and uh, low in protein or high in protein, <laughs> low sugar, <laughs> low calorie, low fat. And again, covered in 100% chocolate. Your taste buds will not know how much this is not a cheat day thing. So head on over to Built.com, grab some Built for yourself and go to Built March Madness and vote for your favorite. All right, everybody, continuing on with today's episode of Locked On NFL. Thanks, as always, for making us your first listen of the day every day. Um, we want to pick up this conversation right where we left off, Luke. The Cleveland Browns, nine and a half is their win total as we're going through our FanDuel win totals, which you can find at uh, FanDuel.com slash Locked On, so you can learn more there. So let's let's pick up this one here. D Deshaun Watson, do we believe that the Deshaun Watson-led Cleveland Browns can win nine and a half games? I'm going to say this. I don't believe so. And I will tell you that the reason why is not because of coaching. It's not because of the weapons around uh, or, or lack of weapons or whatever it might be around Deshaun Watson. It's not because of the uh, defense or anything like that. It's, it's, it's because I don't have that kind of faith in Deshaun Watson. I just simply don't. I know he missed 11 games last year, and when he came back in, he had to play one game and that was like one of the coldest temperatures ever recorded for an NFL game. I get all that, but he was not good last year, and that's what happens when you miss an entire year of football plus 11 games, and I just can't believe at all that after you have been away from the game of football for over a year and a half, got effectively six exhibition games in you before the season was over, that you're really going to come back and lead the Cleveland Browns to double-digit wins in 2023. I can't see it happening. It's a gnarly division, too. Yeah. The, the Ravens. I, I don't know what to make of the Ravens at all. Neither does FanDuel. They've got them at eight and a half wins where they stick all the teams that That's they That's the don't. classic. <laughs> Denver and, and Vikings, <laughs> Seattle. I, we have no idea what happens with these teams. Put them at eight and a half, and if you correctly guess whether or not they got a winning record, you did it. All yours. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you've got but them you there. The you Ravens, have Cincy up at 11 and Cincy a half. Cincy up at 11 and a half. And then Pittsburgh, also no slouch at all of a team um, with Kenny Pickett and mm -hmm. that offense. I, I think that Kenny Pickett actually took some very quiet strides forward on an otherwise Agreed. forgettable Steelers team. Um, so that that's going to be a difficult road forward for the Browns. And kind of like, like I said before, I want to see them really play together as a team. Mm-hmm. With the, everything with Deshaun Watson, trading the farm for him, the contract is now deeply hilarious. <laughs> um, they, it's very funny. Uh, 
the vibe of that team is very much one that sold its soul for Deshaun Watson, right? Mm -hmm. And that's the public, you know, the fans. The, I think that affects the fans more than it affects the players if the players are 100%. kind of doing their job of, of keeping the noise out, right? 100%. But that's really hard when mm -hmm. you can feel that your fans aren't as behind you as they were before. Um, and that, you know, the media, that there's this sort of everything they do is on eggshells a little bit. Uh, you can feel that in a lot of teams and some teams can overcome it and some teams can't. And it's just one more variable that can go against Cleveland that can't really go for them. Yeah. So I would take the under here. Um, I mean, yeah, I could see a world where Deshaun Watson goes back to being the guy he was for the Texans back in 2019, 2018, 2017. But, uh, I, I don't think that that's a likely enough outcome for me to bet the over for sure. And probably I'm, I'm against it enough to, to take the under. Yeah. Yeah. Completely agree with you. Uh, my favorite favorites. So this would be my favorite team that is already a division favorite. And I think one of the more interesting lines here too, Detroit lions, nine and a half in mm -hmm. the in but in the NFC North, which is, Expecting to see a drop off from the Green Bay Packers. There's the Chicago Bears that are kind of piecing things together. I love the trade and trading away that number one overall selection, getting DJ Moore there, continuing to build. I, I like what they've done. I don't know that we see the full sort of um, the full sort of effect of those until maybe another year or so. Kind of like what we yeah. watched the Detroit and, Lions and, do. And uh, they're not selling you that. They're right. They're still the way that they talk about it and you can hear this on locked on bears with lauren and mm -hmm. this is kind of his deal is that it, it's and he's talked about it on this show as well mm -hmm. on tuesdays with me here on locked on nfl that it's it's they are not building rome in a day here right and they're at seven and a half as well with the packers and then mm -hmm. you have the vikings at eight and a half because nobody yep. knows how many one score games they're going to play in this year did you hear that <laughs> dalvin cook is feeling good he's feeling healthy his shoulders at 100 percent I don't, you couldn't miss it. Boy, did they <laughs> shout that from the room. You got Tom Pelissero tweeting it. You got a quote tweet from Ian Rappaport, both very scripted. You got a highlight reel on Instagram. You've got other engagement from other players. They have the full court press going on. Folks, Dalvin Cook is healthy. And if you were maybe waiting to hear that, you heard it. You've heard it several times over. It's like, it's like anytime that like Jimmy Graham would play and they would say, did you know he used to play basketball? Or Ryan yeah. Fitzpatrick. Ryan Fitzpatrick went to Harvard. And like it, it's that <laughs> level of just beat it into your head -ness. It's uh, It's like the Seahawks taking selfies with all the quarterbacks. Like, hey, guys, hey, guys, we might take a quarterback. Hey, we might take a quarterback. If you need a quarterback, you might need to trade up with Arizona. You want a quarterback? You should trade up and take a quarterback. And, and so that way they can't take Will Anderson. Yep. Hey, guys, we might take a quarterback. It's like, <laughs> they're coming up so strong. I don't believe it one bit. <laughs> oh, it's smokescreen season. It's lion season. Oh, yeah. Uh, actually, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna come back to that here in a little bit. For my like of the week is also around some quarterback antics going on in this year's draft. Uh, so the Detroit Lions nine and a half. Um, I I like this line, but I have to say I'm still or I love this for the Detroit Lions, but I still personally believe in the Minnesota Vikings coming in strong enough to keep the Detroit Lions from reaching double digit wins. And I'm a little bit worried about Jerry Goff if I'm being honest as well. Like I don't really That's believe in Jerry Goff. That's always going to be the thing for me. And look, I'm closer to the Lions because they're in my team's division. Mm -hmm. I have been, I have endured off season after off season after off season after off season of national pundits and bloggers and radio personalities and all these people saying, you know, hey, my hot take is this is finally the Lions' year, oh, only to see yeah. them fart out a five win season and get <laughs> forgotten about by Thanksgiving. <laughs> um, this, if this is the year. That, that the Lions finally put something worth remembering together, so be then it. good for you. Then so yeah. be it. And and I do think that this is the best the Lions have looked in a long time. Mm -hmm. I'm no always doubt. going to be a little worried about the goofball. Mm -hmm. um, and I need to see consistency from him that they didn't see even last year. I mean, they started one and five no. last year, and, and it was too much to overcome as, as well as they played down the stretch. Uh I think that they can do a lot of good with that sixth overall pick. I think they can do the wrong thing with that sixth overall pick too. Um, but ultimately they're one of these teams that I need to just, I've heard enough hype. I need to see it to believe it. Yep. And if I see it, I will believe it gladly, but I, the, the, 
show something for all of this now yep. you've been rebuilding for since like the nixon administration show us something <laughs> yeah this is one i i can't wait to come back to after the draft to see if they get six right if they get their draft right like all of that and then really see what the roster looks like on paper and then maybe i'll come back to it but that's one that i i do think is an interesting one it is my favorite of the division favorites though because of how intriguing uh, it is. And then finally, the, the most, the highest win totals belong to the Kansas City Chiefs, the Cincinnati Bengals, and San Francisco 49ers at 11 and a half. Luke kind of discussed earlier why you don't really go to 12 and a half. Uh, but the lowest or least in terms of win totals, we have the Arizona Cardinals and the Houston Texans at five and a half. Luke, out of these two teams, who would you take the under on and why is it the Arizona Cardinals? Because that's who I'm picking. <laughs> yeah, me too. Um, it, it, because it's not the Texans. And here's the deal. The, the Texans need a quarterback, right? Yes. I think they have a very strong backup quarterback battle here. They got Case Keenum versus Davis Mills. That mm -hmm. That is a very strong backup court. Two, two strong backup quarterbacks. You're going to be really happy with that. And somebody's probably going to get a good backup at the end of camp that the, the Texans can recoup a fifth round pick for. I bet that they can swing it that way. But you got the second overall pick. You're getting CJ Stroud or Bryce Young, whichever one. The Panthers don't want. Mm -hmm. If I'm the Texans, I am perfectly happy with that. I love yep. both of those players. Mm -hmm. um, and I think you can plop them in with s veteran receivers like uh, Robert Woods, mm -hmm. um, Nico Collins, Noah Brown. That we, We're not asking the world of those guys. We're asking right. them to win six games this yep. year. And you have an excellent and running back back there, too. That. Denzel Perryman, mm -hmm. Jerry Hughes, uh, they have Desmond King. They have sort of amassed a sneaky little base of talent. Laramie Tunsil, of course. Mm -hmm. They have amassed a sneaky little core of talent that they can actually start to build something real out of as soon as they get a serious big boy quarterback. Yeah. And a serious big boy quarterback is going to fall into their lap in the draft. And the only question is, which one is it going to be? Uh, and should they do something crazy and take like Anthony Richardson, which I don't I think just makes thinking sense. that, but I would not do that if I were them. No, take young or Stroud yeah. and let the Panthers have the other one and, and, you know, walk away happy with your guy of the future. That feels like something that I would not bet against. The Cardinals are an organization I will always comfortably bet against no matter how they're good. Their roster. Looks. I, think, I think Alex Clancy over at Lockdown Cardinals would agree with you. Yes, he's and he's the primary. He has convinced me um, <laughs> that it's just one of the, it's like the Jaguars. It's just one of those orgs that like no matter how many things they do right, eventually the dysfunction at the top will seep in and I yeah. will am, will always be comfortable shorting that. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. Um, I don't trust I don't trust the head coaching hire. I don't trust Kyler Murray's health. I don't trust whatever is going to happen to the wide receiver situation with DeAndre oh, Hopkins cut DeAndre potentially Hopkins. being on like the way out. Like, there's, like yeah, where there's are so we, man? They ha still haven't figured out how to use Isaiah Simmons. Still haven't figured out how to use Zayvon Collins. Are they about to figure that out? Maybe, but we'll see, right? I mean, they did a great job in Philly with um, – with Hassan Reddick, now you have that DC in Arizona. Can he do something similar? But I just don't trust it, at least for 2023. At least for 2023, I can't trust yeah. it uh, right they're, now. They're running back a build, more or less. They're running back a build that was not remotely successful, minus probably the best player on it, which is DeAndre Hopkins, mm -hmm. and hoping that changing coaches does it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I just don't, I don't think, I don't think Jonathan Gannon's that guy. Um, and I don't think that that's going to be enough to, to put them over the, get them over the hump here. All right. One perpetual yike. One perpetual yike. We have more yike coming up for you as well as like, because we're trying to inject some positivity to, <laughs> to the Tuesday episodes <laughs> of Locked on NFL, where you come for the hate and stay for the hate. Uh, so we'll have more coming up for you here in just a moment. Our yike and like of the week as Luke and I wrap up today's episode of Locked on NFL, part of Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, everybody, wrapping up today's episode of Locked on NFL. You got our win totals. You got the hate, the hater raid, the power hate. You got all of it uh, from us for a little bit. But we, we said some positive things, too. We got some positive things in there. So let's start off with the positive things that we have from this week. We always do a yike, which is our like kind of worst thing of the week, and then our like, which is our best thing of the week. Let's start with the like. Let's start with the fun stuff. Luke, why don't you kick us off? What is your like of the week this week? Uh, my like of the week is an update on uh, probably one of the most horrifying things that we all as a collective witnessed 
uh, as a collective football watching ah. population. Demar Hamlin, right, going and visiting the president. What a lovely, wholesome moment for him. Pretty he got cool. to go do his White House visit, wearing that blue and red, the Bills colors. He's aiming at a comeback. He's aiming to rehab. I think <laughs> I don't know a lot about the like condition that he suffered, um, and I don't even know if we know that for sure, but. Mm -hmm. I'd hang him up, buddy. Yeah, I'm kind of, I'm kind of done here, man. <laughs> but you I've know seen, what? Seen everything there is to see if I'm Demar Hamlin. <laughs> but there's a reason he's the athlete, and I'm not. So That's do it. your thing. Go meet the president, and uh, he, I, I, he is really primed to do a lot of good with the the new public spotlight that he finds himself. Yeah, it's in. awesome, uh, and it's nice. Yeah, it's really, really cool. I have a similar thing to that. It's not actually my like of the week, but there was this weird story for the fourth time since 2017, the New Orleans Saints medical staff during a routine physical has diagnosed yeah. somebody with a life, potentially life-saving diagnosis. This time it was Foster Moreau with Hodgkin's lymphoma. Uh, they had a, an offensive lineman from, uh, from, from Buffalo that they claimed a while back to where something like that happened. John Dornboss, heart condition, Nick Fairley, heart condition in 2017. What a wild wild thing ankle injuries perplex them but when it comes to <laughs> you know these these routine physicals and and, and potentially life-saving diagnoses pretty pretty incredible stuff go to the doctor everybody go yeah, get your ch ran random checkups because you never know when you're gonna find like a random blood clot that'll That's it. save your life to find it early in fact the next time that i'm at the saints facility for a press conference i might just ask to be checked out like Y'all got a second? Y'all got a second? Hey. Like just a stethoscope <laughs> to the chest? Let me know. <laughs> like, that's it. Um, uh, buy you lunch. <laughs> yeah, for real. I got you. Um, all right, my like of the week. There's a lot of Hendon Hooker love going on right now. The Tennessee quarterback is getting a whole lot of love. And you know what? I love it. I love it. He's getting top 30 visits. He's on his way here to New Orleans. He's got a top 30 visit with the Saints. Uh, the uh, 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 Mike Tannenbaum over here mocking him, what, top five, top three in a mock draft and everything. Look, he, there, there's two, there's one of two things that are happening here, right? Like there's genuine interest in Hendon Hooker as a, as a round one prospect or like Hendon Hooker's agent and representative are, they're hustling. They are hustling. And I love it one way or another because this guy had a clean ACL tear late in the season he's on effectively the same almost the exact same timeline as joe burrow was coming back from his acl tear his rookie season going into his second year almost to the day those would be the i think it's like a three-day oh, split that's comforting and everything which is kind of okay for them yeah that went great for them <laughs> right because he would go on to play not just 18 or not just 17 games but 20 plus games made it all the yeah, way to the super bowl with games. that and so, like, what a cool thing to just see either, one. yeah, either Hendon Hooker just getting the attention that he deserves as a young, exciting quarterback, or his team doing phenomenal work behind him to back him up. Both of those things are really cool to me. It feels like some really dumb team is going to get gaslit into taking him into, the like, the top 50, Dude. which, you know what? Good for Hendon Hooker. By all yep. accounts, he seems like a nice guy. Go collect that second round contract and that pedigree. You'll probably, you'll almost certainly get a chance to start for an NFL team. And what more could you ask for? Good for you, buddy. But, uh, uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh oh. And speaking of uh oh, <laughs> speaking of uh oh, I'm going to kick us off with the yike. Is that okay? If I kick us off with uh, the yike? You should end it with yours. Oh, okay, okay, sure. okay, okay. You go ahead then. My, my yike goes to Jalen Carter's pre-draft process. Whoa. Because boy, howdy. Whoa. It's going rough. Yeah. Uh, obviously, he had the thing with the street racing, right? Yes. Uh, a video just came out about like his interaction with the police, which I'll call it predictable and let you just interpret that however you choose. Facts. Um, but his pro day looking very out of it and very like almost unprepared for it. You flip on that dude's tape. And I don't think it's even a hot take to say that that was the best player in college football in 2022. And he should be a top five pick based on that. Yeah. But boy, if, if ever there was going to be a, you know, from the wrap up from the end triple zeros, national championship game, Georgia's celebrating whatever his draft stocks there. And people talk about him going number one overall to the Bears, right? 
whatever his draft stock is, every single thing that could have affected it has gone poorly for yeah, him. It's wild. It, 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 yike. And I don't know how much of it's his fault or how much of it is, you know, even really like worth criticizing him over, but it is just bad value for him. And he might honestly, the bears might still get him at nine. Yeah, they might yeah. pass on him. Yeah. Depending on if he's, if he's bombing interviews or something like that and all this, if everybody's really got word on all this off field, We've seen crazier falls, right? Oh, for sure. 100%. Especially for defensive tackles. Mm-hmm. Yike. 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 All right. My yike of the week is simple. Let brown girls have fun. That's it. It's yes. real simple. It's real easy. My yike of the week is everybody that got all up in. I'm not even. And, and oh like, I'm going to be honest. Was there. Oh, whew, my good Songs were sung. In their feelings. Like Drake, it was the wildest thing that I have seen in a long time to where somebody pointed at their finger and waved their hand in front of their face, public enemy number one. Just the weirdest. We should, for, for those who did not watch the yes, uh, sorry. NCAA Thank you, Thank Women's you, Basketball Championship game, uh, it featured w- what seems to be a budding, beautiful rivalry between oh, Caitlin Clark of Iowa and Angel Reese of LSU. C- Caitlin Clark has been talking mad trash mad the trash. entire tournament and backing it up, playing like and absolutely incredible 100%. and and just like dunking all over people figuratively and literally <laughs> and doing the John Cena face thing to yep. people and all of that. Gets into Telling the people, shut up, you're down 15 points. Like, talk your right. stuff, Caitlin. Right, which is awesome. We yes. also love that. Very cool when you're backing it up. But you get into the national championship, LSU beats you pretty Handling. comfortably, and Angel yeah. Reese is kind of throwing it a little bit back in her face, and suddenly it's not okay anymore. No, it's no. not very cool, is it? No, <laughs> no, don't talk trash, don't get into somebody's face. No, Have you can't do class. that. Have some <laughs> class. Oh, they're so classless. Get out of my face. You're classless. You're classless. It drives me uh, nuts. So shout out to Angel Reese. Talk your stuff, Angel. Wear the crown. You're the champion. You're good. Caitlin, love all the trash talking she did to both of them high level basketball players. Can't wait to see that continue on for the next mm-hmm. few years. Because Angel Reese is only a sophomore. So can, yeah. yeah I need we're to having see fun. them. I, I need to see like LSU Iowa matchups i need it to happen or, in the tournament or have some exhibition or something take it to the, the wnba or take it to the pros which All is a ways it. away they're both sophomores yeah yep. so. just incredible stuff so i know that it's not and i know that this isn't football related but here's where here's the the the, the conclusion or tie-in that i want to i want to take here is that like the the idea of criminalizing trash talk which has picked up more and more recently is so weird to me and maybe maybe this is me becoming an old head Maybe this is me getting to the point to where I am somebody that's looking at some aging era of professional sports, and I'm just not no. getting it. And if that's the case, that's fine. I'll take my lump for that. But I don't think that's the case. We went from Allen Iverson stepping over Tyron Lue. We went from uh, Go back Richard to Jordan. Ch- right, going back to Michael Jordan. We, yo, know, people got mad about Cam Newton's little video where he announced that he was going to be thrown at the Auburn Pro Day, which was one of our, our likes of the week here, by the way. I believe it was yours. Uh, yeah, it was and people were mad at him for saying that there were <laughs> randoms playing in the NFL and playing quarterback. If you, if you don't think there were randoms playing quarterback in the NFL last year, you did not watch the NFL last year. <laughs> not a shot. No shot. <laughs> and so, like, we're criminalizing that. We're criminalizing Angel Reese. We're blah, blah, blah. Like, it's all okay. It's part of the game. I love, and you brought it up before we started recording, I love Benjamin Solak's uh, uh, tweet from over at the ringer where he said, if my children have the opportunity to be in the 100th percentile of athletic performance, they better know it's okay to talk trash. Like, they should know mm-hmm. it's okay to talk trash. So look at it's, me. I don't care. I don't, I don't care if you're – uh, I don't care if you're if you're brown, if you're not brown, if you're a man, if you're a woman. Look at me. If you're good, talk your stuff. I don't care. Talk your yep. stuff. And if you're gonna talk, you better be good. And Gotta that's be good. nature. And yep. it, we all know that that's nature. How many times have we seen somebody? My favorite is uh, Philadelphia Eagles linebacker Zach Brown talked all kinds of trash. This is 2019. Mm-hmm. Talked all kinds of trash about Kirk Cousins leading up to a Vikings Eagles matchup. Eagles fans will never stop clowning him for it because that's how they work. <laughs> um, he got 
victimized. The, <laughs> the Vikings blew out the Eagles that game. Yeah. And he got released. So look, Jesus. <laughs> the, the punishment for talking trash is, is built in. We yeah. do not need to further vilify it. We do not need to disincentivize it by criticizing it. Yep. If you talk trash and you don't back it up, you get roasted. Yep. It'll take care that of itself. That is the law. That is nature. And it is perfectly just. As 100%. is. 100%. So shut the heck up. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody who's still talking, yike. Yike. What a fun day. What a fun time we've had, Luke. What a fun time we've had here on the Locked On NFL <laughs> podcast. Tomorrow, uh, you will get Tony and James as per usual, as it is will be Wednesday. Um, so thank you all for hanging out here on the Locked On NFL podcast. Go check out Bilt Bar. Go check out FanDuel. Go check out uh, my good buddy Luke Inman's news draft yes. newsletter. Um, that has been going on for a while now. He's doing a great job over there. We will see you all next week here on the Locked On NFL podcast wherever you find your favorite podcast as well as YouTube. See you next time.